Hey there everyone, Rob here with Bim Smith. 2021 has landed, we have our hands on it. Uh, I'm here to hit you up with a few quick um, things that I've looked at very briefly. So the first thing we're gonna see here, splash screen, same building as from the 2020 release. No big change there. Just you get, be cognizant that when you open it, you're opening the right version. You'll also notice the icon, it still hasn't changed. Autodesk is, is sticking to their guns on this one. I'm sure in, in a matter of hours or more at worst case, the, by the end of the day, somebody will have updated the Revit icons or the Autodesk icons that have the release number in the top right corner. Keep an eye out on the internet. I'm sure you can find those. Personally, I think those are a great little enhancement to do on your own end. Um, so lo look out for that. But I'm going to look at a few things here with you guys. We're going to open up just the basic Revit sample file. I have a little list. I, I apologize to my MEP and my structural friends. Um, this is going to be an architecturally heavy video uh, just because that's my background and these are the things that excited me the most, quite honestly. So here we go. The first one. It's true. It's here. I've been begging for it since 2005, maybe 2006. They're a real thing slanted walls so I dabbled with it a little bit I've got myself a wall I can take it I'm gonna move my properties down a little bit I can switch it from a vertical wall to a slanted wall I can change my angle 30 degrees unrealistic in some cases but totally handy I remember many of projects having to do coved lighting areas with these kind of slanted walls up in the uh, in, in the lighting area for the ceilings of conference centers um, this is super slick so the nice thing is you can actually go in both directions with it uh, the driving factor obviously is the start and the end point of your wall so be cognizant of that one um, but that's what that is what is doing that so then the nice thing is they've definitely looked into this and, and considered a few things if you trim your walls it trims automatically for you if you take your second wall and you slant it as well and I say okay 10 degrees on that guy it cleans up very well very well done um, in, in terms of that so I've already done this but I'm going to show you guys what happens when you try to break it and do things that are a little bit unrealistic so a door I'm going to use just the basic pocket slider door. Am I ever going to put a door in a slanted wall? Mm, ideally not. However, here it is. The opening is a little bit funny, but that's because it's a pocket door and that's the way it was modeled to do that. However, if I switch that from the pocket to the single flush, for example, the geometry kind of cuts in the way that you would expect it to. And one of the downfalls is obviously the frame doesn't flex for the uh the door the opening the way it should be you'd obviously have to model this a little bit differently you're evidently not going to do uh, a door in a slanted wall like this but i wanted to show you it's possible i'm i'm even actually a little bit surprised that they put this in but you can technically change the orientation of the door to be slanted as well um make sure you're swinging in the right direction i guess I, i'm not too sure but there it is uh, a hatch door I guess would totally make sense that you would have an access hatch so it, it, the more I think about it the more I play with it I've I'm now seeing uh, scenarios that it might make sense but but there it is so you can do that the next one is uh, windows so uh, when you're placing your window if you hover in the right location you will see the dashed kind of snap line the base sill a uh, default base sill is there and that's uh, picking up automatically well well thought out feature so the windows same thing you can select your window you can come in here you can say okay i want it to be slanted and it will go with um very very nicely done um so i can come over here i can do the same thing i can say create similar um and then i can automatically say slanted something i hadn't thought of if i say create similar Oh, okay. It, it would be nice to be able to say it's going to be slanted right from the placement. Uh, it doesn't seem to be an option. Not not a huge thing. Um, but, and I'm wondering if... So it doesn't carry over the match properties either. That's totally fine. 
Um, but, but that is, that is one of those things. So, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Okay. So anyways, that's that. Uh, so let's move that over. So unrealistic condition, unrealistic geometry, not to worry about that. It's nice to know that it's, that it's cutting, I guess, the way I would expect it to, all things considered. The next one is, let's check something out real quick. We're going to take this, we're going to switch this to curtain wall. There's a curtain wall. Cross section, vertical, slanted. Awesome. Let's go uh, 15 degrees. Very cool. Um, one of the things I haven't checked, what's it doing to, I'm guessing emollients all follow exactly the way I kind of would have expected them to. Um, I'm going to try and break it again. We're going to go shaded mode. Um, I'm going to take this guy. Can I use... We're going to kill that wall. And we're going to draw another... Actually, I should have just done match properties. Now that I think about it, um, we're going to say slanted. We're going to say uh, 90 degrees. 90 degrees, whoops, 90 degrees, negative 80, all right, so this one looks like if I go 89 degrees, not very realistic, it does it, so that's kind of cool, um, so that exists, so then the only other thing I am curious is if I change the base offset. If I go negative a thousand. So the hosting point remains, or the pivot point, I guess, of the slant remains exactly where the sketch line is, the original draw line is. The um, other thing I notice automatically is when you're slanting a wall, you actually can no longer edit the profile. It makes total sense to me. Um, it's one of those things that all of a sudden that sketch line is kind of uh, is is out of axis or or yeah I, I guess out of axis and so that'll make it a little bit more difficult for them to control but I, I you know what like all things considered again um, to me this is this is great this is this is fantastic very very well done uh, Autodesk um, the next one on my list uh, I have heard the realistic is apparently a lot more realistic and is a lot more pleasing uh, right out of the gates so we're going to check that real quick evidently this is one of those things that is uh, dependent on your horsepower of of your uh, graphics card sorry this looks really good to me um it's not render quality obviously um some things kind of still have you know the black edges and stuff uh, but this looks uh, really good. This looks actually very, very nice. Um, and then let's do some shadows just to see how that reacts. Can't imagine they made it this far and then dropped the ball. See, that looks really nice as well. So, nice enhancement. Um, to me, definitely, I've got a bit more of a workhorse uh, machine here, but to me, this looks like it's giving you a pretty good quality, a pretty good idea of what things are going to be like. Evidently, the, uh, the the quality and the material going in is what's going to drive this, but uh, ni nice enhancement, definitely, to say the least. So let's look at the next one on my list, working in large schedules. So I know the sample project here has one large schedule. Uh, it's the how do I? Um, so I'm going to, it's large, it's not that large, so we're going to do this. We're going to go window tile so that I can make this a problematic schedule. We've all had this. Normally it's on door schedules, but here you go. The first enhancement that they did highlighted rows when you select one. So this is huge. Like I said, door schedules, you come over here, you pick that first door, and then you start to pan over and you go, oh, I forget which one I'm at. So there was, you were doing all sorts of just trickeries and, and shenanigans to try to make sure you were still following the same one. Now here you have it highlighted in blue. 
your row selection. To me, this is a really, really nice feature, um, especially for all those 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 BIM gurus out there that are data crunching in, in huge, huge schedules. So very nicely done. The other one that was obnoxious in the past, they've resolved it, is freeze headers. Look at this. This is super nice. The header now stays where it should be, much like a lot of the big... Uh, I'm not going to name any names, number crunching softwares where you can freeze your header. So this is a super handy feature as well. The third one that has to do with, um, they're calling it with large schedules, is striped rows. This is an awesome feature. So striped rows, I can turn it on. Right now it's obviously off, so if I turn it on with the checkbox, they out of the box have already default set up a first row stripe color and a second row stripe color. And the difference in this one is very minute. But the, what's nice about this one, the one that they've done, is that it seems to be printer friendly to some extent. So you can now see that I've got, I'm going to zoom this in uh, a little bit. Um, you can see kind of that, that differentiation in color. But why that's nice in that light color that they have is this will print really nicely with the right printer. Um, clearly, a lot of GCs have asked for this kind of thing over the years where they look at, again, those huge door schedules and they go, hey, you know, Mr. Mr. Architect, can you give me something that has a little bit of differentiation between the lines? Here it is. The nice thing about this, if you saw a while ago, is that I can actually change my colors. So let's do this real quick. Um, let's go back to appearance. Actually, I'm going to zoom out back a little bit. Uh, I want to do this for a little second. April Fools unfortunately passed, but you could have had some fun and gone in and changed somebody's schedules. First stripe grow. If you wanted to have a very obnoxious color, you can do it. It definitely makes it stand out. Um, the nice thing about this is for your working schedule, if it's not on the sheet, you can definitely make it a more a more pronounced differentiation between your two colors. April Fools, ha ha, let's pick two really obnoxious colors and set your schedules like that. And that looks absolutely hideous, but it is doable. So it's nice to know that you can change the two colors. Not really sure why you would do it, but the feature is there. Very nicely done. Um, we'll set these back. Not that it really matters because this is a sample project that I'm not going to save, nor am I going to open. And I accidentally set them to both gray. So there it is. Great little feature there as well. So next up, we're going to go back to our tabbed views. I'm going to go to my first floor plan again. A long, long, long requested feature. Uh, we're going to be able to now link PDFs. Almost hard to believe that it exists. Um, here it is. So I'm going to link this in. I just downloaded a quick PDF online. It's, it's, a, it's an existing building uh, with a floor plan. And there it is. This is nothing. This is nothing um, su super good looking. However, the tool, the idea behind it, is that I can now have a background PDF brought directly into Revit. This is a great, great tool uh, for anyone that's having to deal with consultant files that are getting sent to them from PDF or existing drawings or archive drawings or whatever else it might be. So. A uh, very nice feature on that one as well. Next one up, not a new feature, but it looks like it's gotten some enhancements, at least that's on my list, is the Path of Travel tool. So we're going to look at that real quick. Uh, that is under Analyze. We're going to go Path of Travel. We're going to start out on that deck, and we're going to finish the next point. Uh, we're going to finish on the other deck. Oh, Oh, you know what? There's oh the outdoor dining. That's down below. My bad. All right, so we're gonna start on this one, and we are gonna end in the kitchen, kind of there. Um, 
it does it automatically this is pretty nice uh, one of the things you can do now also is you can reveal the obstacles I don't know if this was in the previous version I haven't really used it too too much recently um, but you can see your obstacles it looks like it's kind of avoiding some of my lower laying furniture uh, and that's totally fun not, 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 not a huge thing but the nice thing is now you can also come in here I can add some waypoints so my guy is uh, going from the deck to the kitchen uh, if I wanted him to go grab a drink I can add a waypoint I can bring him in here he will zoom around he uh, he forgot to check the laundry before he went for his drink let's go check the laundry it will go in and out of your spaces this is pretty slick he uh, he wants to go to the other side there it is it's the fastest path this is a really nice well done um, it seems pretty easy intuitive to use uh, so I think that's a that's a great feature um, look moving forward so this is something I want to dive into more to see really more of what they've changed but that's definitely nice to see that that's uh, in here now so those are really the quick uh, hit uh, topics that I wanted to, to go over with you guys slanted walls easily 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 the most exciting thing I think I've seen come out of Autodesk uh, or come out of Revit in the last few years this to me is great to see um, I know it's going to be used by a lot of people in a lot of different conditions and it's going to help break some of that stigma that, that everything has to be just so straight up and down uh, the next one was we hit three things in the large schedules it was the freezing of the header it was the highlighting of the active row in the schedules the working with the striped rows those are super nice the next one uh, we also touched was the 3d uh, render realistic looks way sharper in my opinion and the last one or sorry not the last one but the other one was linking PDFs big big thing it, it is so nice to know that we can link PDFs in now as backgrounds and the last one path of travel common path of travel whatever you want to call it um, looks to me on the surface a little bit more user friendly um, actually one of the things I'm curious it looks like it took into account uh, stairs so uh, those are some quick things keep an eye out on on our blog on bimsmith.com check out our market pages check out our content it's constantly growing um, but we'll keep an eye out for more videos we're going to put some stuff out to, to touch on the MEP features we're gonna put some stuff hopefully to touch on the structural and uh, let's uh, keep keep moving forward on stuff and how I hope you guys have yourselves a great rest of the day and uh, looking forward to seeing what else is out there on Revit 2021 Thanks a lot for watching. Take it easy.